Hello, Herman here with another video in the ClearPass workshop series where we will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with wired wireless and Active Directory and much more. In this specific video, we will be configuring 8021X for wired traffic on our Aruba OS switches. So to revisit the lab deployment that we have, um, we have a central data center with uh, central services, AD, uh, DNS, stuff like that. And we have a branch. So today we will be configuring access site one where we have an uh, Aruba OS 2930F switch and uh, two ClearPass appliances. And we will configure them both. And in uh, that deployment, uh, we have some VLANs already assigned. So we have a management VLAN, which is VLAN number 10, because we are site uh, number one. We have a corporate VLAN uh, of 11, uh, voice VLAN 12, and an untrusted VLAN 14. So what we are doing, um, we should uh, get our clients into the corporate VLAN if they authenticate with .1x. So, and uh, more in detail, this is my switch. So what we will be doing is uh, we are configuring port two through four for 8021X and uh, yeah, we will later on uh, add Mac authentication in a next video to that. So to get us started, again, we go to Aruba Solution Exchange. Uh, we go to the solutions here on the right, we can select uh, Aruba Switch Solutions. So we see only the solutions that are related to Aruba OS switches. And let's pick this one, the port access security configuration because that matches more or less what I want to do uh, today. So in this uh, step through procedure, we can configure that we are doing 802.1x here. Um, we'll be doing Mac authentication later on uh, because typically you will have a hybrid uh, port. So both with Mac authentication and with .1x. Um, this is where we configure the ClearPass server IP, the radio shared secret, and you can see the configuration is built up here and this is where we configure the ports um we put a uh, client limit on the port and we can put an yeah standard authenticated vlan so if the authentication server doesn't respond with a vlan id it will re uh, respond with this uh, vlan uh, where 14 is an untrusted vlan so we can use that for untrusted traffic uh, like devices that need to be profiled uh, and so on so with finish we'll get the full configuration here. And I have a short version of that uh, configuration over here. So I created three servers. So I use the virtual IP and the both publisher and subscriber IP addresses. One of the questions that I uh, received is why should I put uh, not only put in the VIP in? So one of the things is that if you have a virtual IP, it's uh, just an, yeah, like a virtual IP, it's active on one of the ClearPass appliances. So if there is a local issue on that appliance, it might be that the virtual IP is not moving over to the other side. But um, if you uh, put in the real host IP addresses, uh, the switch can make a decision to go to the other device as well. Um, also, uh, it allows us to more or less load share across appliances. However, you can do that with multiple virtual IPs as well. And probably that would be the uh, best way to do the redundancy. So have uh, multiple VIPs uh, where the VIP is active on one appliance and can fall back to another one and then still put multiple VIPs in your switch configuration. So the switch uh, has some uh, way to um, fall back to another server if authentications are too slow or uh, for other reasons uh, do not uh, work. So let's push this configuration in our switch. So here we have our switch. So this is the configuration um, in the switch. So um, yeah, so let's uh, move to the ClearPass side. So on the ClearPass side, um, again, um, we need to, uh, need to make sure that uh, in the network devices we have the workshop switch uh, configured. And we did that in a previous lab where we did TechX uh, for the switch. So it's already there with a radius shared secret in there. So that's fine. We're good uh, for that. 
then we need to uh, create the enforcement profiles. And in the Aruba instant, we created these profiles where we have the management VLAN, where we return an Aruba user VLAN. The Aruba switches work slightly different. So um, we need to create a new one. Um, workshop, um, let me see how I should call it. Let's keep the naming uh, similar. Let's call it like this. And we choose here the VLAN enforcement. So the switches will do standard VLAN enforcement return VLAN 10 for management. Then here on the attributes, um, you can see that the default attributes are filled in already and we can add uh, just the VLAN ID here. And as you can see, I already did it for the other VLANs. So we have the untrusted VLAN here that returns VLAN 14. So that's good. Then here we need to create a policy. And in this policy, let's create it first. So workshop Aruba OS switch 8021. X, I'd like to make it clear, 8021X on wired. Default, again, I always choose the deny access profile. So if we make a mistake or oversee things, um, yeah, we not end up with uh, giving too much access to the network. So here we check if the tips role equals admin. So for admin users, we will return the management VLAN. I see I missed a T there, uh, but we can fix that uh, later on. So for uh, contractors, tips role equals contractors, we will return the untrust VLAN. And for the tips role equals employee, we will return the corporate VLAN. And we will do the same for uh, machine authenticated uh, systems. So if the tips role equals machine authenticated and you can see it's between between square brackets and that means that it's a default one and this uh, default one has the nice property that it automatically um, is assigned when you do a computer authentication so this looks pretty good for the service so now create a for the policy now create a new service so let's first create a new separator. So we copy this one. And as you know, this is just a text enforcement Aruba. And we um, just use it to separate the, um, the, the, yeah, the different services and to bring some structure into uh, the whole policy. So we need to disable it, then reorder it and Oh, I think it's pretty on the right place now. And uh, we will now create a new service for the uh, 802.1x wired. So that's the default. And we give that a nice name, uh, workshop Aruba OS switch dot one X for example. Um, for now we'll keep the default ones um, I typically remove the unneeded ones and uh, we will authenticate against the active directory here in the roles. We again take a role mapping. So we did it once from AD groups. We assign clear pass roles and here in the enforcement policy, not the wireless, this one. So this is the enforcement policy that we just created. So admins will get the management VLAN 
contractors in the untrusted and employees will be uh, placed in the corporate VLAN. So let's save that. And now uh, we need to bring on our virtual machine. So here's my virtual machine. And we need to, uh, of course, configure our interface. So we have the Ethernet adapter here. And as you can see, there should be an authentication tab in here. It's not there. And that's because by default, uh, 802.1x on the wired is disabled in Windows. So we go to the services. And in the services, we go down here to the wired auto config. Let me see where it is wired auto config. Um, we can start it right now. And what we uh, probably should do is to make this automatic starting. So it will start when Windows uh, restarts uh, as well. So we go back and try again. So now you see we have the authentication window in here. So here we can uh, again select the, uh, the, the, the certificates. So we will be checking that it's from the Aruba Workshop CA. Uh, we will be doing, uh, yeah, for now, the EPEEP uh, automatic authentication. And um, yeah, let's see what happens when we plug it in. I'm plugging in my Ethernet adapter and you can see it's uh, identifying and uh, yeah, it looks like this worked. So let's see here in the access tracker. Um, what we do see here is that we um, probably these are the Mac authentications, but we can see here that our uh, AD system has authenticated and uh, we output it the VLAN number 11 and uh, yeah, that should make that this uh, specific user uh, will get an IP address uh, in the um, in the VLAN 11. So let's see if that works as well. Status, we can see the details here. Um, and you can see, see indeed that we have an uh, VLAN, uh, an IP address in the corporate VLAN. So that's pretty nice. And uh, yeah, if we uh, like if we like with the wired, we can uh, switch this around and um, here make sure that we do user or computer authentication. So we can uh, fall back to the uh, user authentication. So it's attempting to authenticate. So in here you see that we have the user authenticated um so that's yeah that's pretty nice so it's uh yeah admin user so now it will be in the uh, admin vlan so what you can see here is that we have mac authentication uh, configured as well so um as you can see i did put in the commands to do mac authentication as well and in the very next video we will make uh, sure that that's working um, as well. So then we can do Mac authentication and dot one X on the same port, which um, is very nice. So we can uh, allow, for example, IP phones that can't do dot one X on the network as well. So thank you for watching right now. If you like this video, please put your uh, comments below this video and subscribe. So you will be the first one to see next videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.